Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Uh, we are coming off hot from the uh, 10-23-2022 FFBE live stream, and we're doing our beige carpet after-party review uh, with Sinzar, Elmsmore, and Clad in Darkness Gaming. Um, and we're here to talk about what we just saw in the live stream. And so I'm going to let each one of them say hello really quick, and then we'll get into some really fun stuff, including our immediate reactions, some opinions, some feedback, and probably lots more other stuff as we uh, just sit here and ramble. But uh, go ahead and say hello, guys. What's up? Hey, everybody. H hello, everybody. Thank you for having us. Very, very cool. So we're just going to gonna go through a lot of the, the slides and the content that they showed in the pictures or uh, in the live stream and then um, kind of talk about it. But before we do, um, real quick hot take, I'm going to go kind of like from the top down. Um, Sinzar, what was your favorite part of tonight's live stream? Uh, favorite part was the, I guess, the announcement of Clash of Wills because we've had a kind of a boring three weeks and I am ready to get back to the good content of the game, which will start on Thursday based on the live stream. Very cool. And did you, did you happen to have a least favorite part? Um, uh, I, I, I want to be respectful, but if I'm going to be just honest here, I do feel like Tony and Justin need to work on their, like, uh, what's the way to describe it? Like compatibility or their energy or whatever it seems like almost they're reading from a script mm. and not especially excited about the content itself and they seem like i said it really feels like they're just reading from a script and it's like low energy so i don't know i'd, I'd like them to like kick it up a little bit room, room to grow <laughs> yes cool. yes how about you elmsmore no, my favorite part was the fact that they're bringing the change to the intrinsic abilities rather than being behind a, a poll. That that was really, really good news. So that made me pretty happy. Um, my least favorite part... Uh, I don't know. I thought it was... Uh, I expected it to be short. Uh, it was short and sweet. Uh, nothing crazy. So to me, there was no least favorite part. Awesome. Good to hear. And uh, And Mr. Darkness over there? Let's see, my favorite part had to be the announcement of Lilith. Because, like, months ago, I kind of figured it would be her because of the polls and all that from two years ago. She was in the top ten, so I figured she would eventually get her own NV base. And my least favorite part was probably the rewards we were getting. You know, they seemed a little bit lackluster, but, eh, oh well. Cool, cool. I think my favorite part is just seeing that we're going to have more to do than just Clash of Wills. So the 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 um, the other Halloween themed events that are coming out, um, I, I like that we're going to have more to do than just you know work on Clash of Wills. So that's kind of cool. Um, I would say my least favorite part was the uh, the length of it. I feel like it was a really kind of a, kind of a short event. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of time was spent on polls and stuff like that, and less time talking about like content. But you know, there's it's technically a lot of stuff coming, so we're going to take a look at that now. Um, so we'll kind of start with the, the exciting one um, right here, right off the bat. Elegant Temptress Lilith. What do we think of the sprite? Uh, it's fine. It's, I guess, fine. I don't know. It's, you know, she's obviously a tank, and I've mentioned this before. You know, I prefer the classic tank look, like heavy armor, etc. She's more of like tanking in a swimsuit mm -hmm. so <laughs> not my favorite choice of design but it, the the uh, actual art itself looks fine yeah it, it does seem to be a metal swimsuit <laughs> yeah that, that's something well, i mean she's a demoness so she has thick skin uh, that's her <laughs> she's got uh what was it dr10 silver <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i mean i like it i, I find uh, the sprite really really cute um, so I, I thought the spike, uh, the sprite looks amazing. So no, no, uh, no bad comments there. Yeah. Yeah. I also like it too. It's really, really good at working. You know, it's adorable. It's like, it's really good for gummy. Lots of hearts. And I love how colorful it is. I've really enjoyed how colorful the most recent sprites have been like Chizuru and Kaito and, uh, Tsukiko. They're all just so vibrant, which is really cool. Um, what do you guys think about these? These abilities. Um, 
she is a tag chainer, which you can see from the top right, uh, which is very awesome. You know, I I really love using tanks that tag chain, which is basically just bigs and wedge, and I use them more than I should because they're a seven star. But having a Neo Visions tank that tag chains is going to enable a lot of you know flashy clears. You can you know add more finishers. We can run you know like Golbez, the upcoming X Death, and a friend Golbez all at the same time and have someone to tag for them. So that kind of stuff is really awesome. And, you know, tag chains are just better than regular chains, always. <laughs> now, it is a tag chain on her LB, though. Yes, yes. But uh, if you can see in the bottom right, it enables tag chain for her other abilities, kind of like Chizuru. Oh, yeah, so, sweet. Yeah, so once you do it, it's going to make more of her abilities tag chaining as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, what do we think about the uh, featured abilities, though? So we've got... Uh, Veil of Night, giving reducing dark resistance, converting dark damage to HP for the caster, and adding dark element to all enemies. Uh, yeah, so basically it's like a more limited version of Carton's LB. Um, that being said, you know, you're probably not going to want to bring Carton, unless his intrinsic is amazing, but um, we'll probably get to that later in the video. But uh, yeah, so... It sounds probably like that the upcoming Clash of Wills, Dark Absorb, is going to be at the very least helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and she can do it on a Magnus. Again, Carton can do it infinitely forever. So I guess we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And uh, am I seeing that we're getting our first resistant, reduced resistance to maces, or did uh, the Neo Visions Poppy have that as well? Uh, Poppy has it, so does the Neo Visions Ash. Oh, okay. So it's not the first one. And then Kaito and Clash of Wills, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah, no, it's not the first one. So I wasn't really impressed with their kit. Uh, to me, it's just a copy paste of different units. And like Sinzar pointed out, I mean, Carton does it better mm -hmm. for uh, imbuing the enemy with dark. So I'm not really impressed. Uh, but I, again, it just depends on your unit pool, what you currently own and stuff. So to each his own. Uh, but for me, it's a no. Yeah. So what, what do you think, uh, Darkness? Because you were saying that you, you kind of were hoping it was Lilith. Based on what you're seeing here, are you excited about her? Well, I I won't know till Thursday until we have her kit. But if she has like a dark amp and whatnot too, she'll be really useful. I'm sure she'll have some niche uses, like how uh, Berserker Rico has some niche uses and all that. So hopefully she has some niche uses like Chow and can counter things instead of countering magic. She can counter physical like Chow does. That could be cool. They did also mention that she's going to have ability to boost damage for the party against Stones and Reapers, which is obviously relevant for the current Clash of Wills or the upcoming Clash of Wills. So, and and she she can imbue dark to the party as well. I don't know if they if they mention if she can amplify it or not, but they definitely said she can imbue it. Right, they definitely said Im, uh, imbue, which is pretty cool. Um, and let's take a look too at the card. Uh, bad. <laughs> just honestly, it's bad. That was my hot take too. It was just like, it's like it's it's not as good as Power Cut. So the, card. there's, yeah, it's worse than Power Cut. It's worse than the other Dragon Quest cards. It's worse than Warrior Blight's card. It's dramatically worse than Jack's card. It's worse than a global exclusive tank card we had on the Mont banner. It's worse than I think Mont's card as well. This card is just bad. Like what happened? Yep. Um. And I'm noticed it does have killers for demons, humans, reapers, and stones. 50%. Mm -hmm. And she's a tank. And she's a tank. Yep. So, yeah, you know, it's fine if she does damage and she does good damage, but I'd still want other stuff than killers on a defensive card. Yes. Yep. Um, it does have flat, uh, like the, the, the static flat, whatever turn we're going to use 500 defense and hp dream big yeah the problem is the flat hp is almost irrelevant because that doesn't scale whatsoever so it's like you're going from like 72,000 to 72,500 mm -hmm. which is whatever yeah and uh, the the base at level 10 is 1000 so that does scale but it's only 1000 as mm -hmm. opposed to older tank cards which for example fina returned 10,000 hp or Jekt, I think it's three thousand. Or uh, if I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But anyways, there's the free one. The free one we got from Dragon Quest, which is three thousand. So there's so many better options. Yep. 
Now, um, I'm realizing that I forgot to add this picture, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen right here of her STMR and her TMR. Make that a little bigger so we can see it. Um, how do you feel about this? It's a two-handed mace with 600 um, HP, 66 attack, and 220 defense. Um, it gives perfect demonization, which is uh, more HP and defense for, for her. Um, and it restores HP and MP 10% every turn as an STMR. Yeah, so this is probably my biggest disappointment with the entire stream, and this is a massive, massive mistake by the designers, and I'm not sure if this is intentional in order to handicap her, kind of the way that they did for Esther and made the feel of both sides, which they know better, and that is strictly done to troll the players. So this is kind of the same thing. They made this a two-handed weapon, and they have to know, they have to know, that you are losing like a more than a thousand defense to use this over going one hander and shield because you can use the sword of light for I think it's a two twenty plus two twenty base plus five hundred flat one handed sword and then you can use a shield in the offhand up to like two twenty defense with scales times five from the two true double hand so you're getting something like sixteen hundred defense from a sword and shield with this one you're only getting the 220 base, and the 500. So you're missing the 1,000 extra defense you're getting from a shield. So you're going to lose 1,000 defense to go the two-handed route that they're kind of like wanting to push. Mm -hmm. If they wanted her to use a two-handed weapon, why does this not have 1,500 flat defense? Because you're going to get 1,000 more by putting on the Warrior of Light's uh, Sword of Light TMR that works on all tanks. It's not locked to him. And then just a shield. You're going to get 1,000 more defense. Now, for for damage, obviously, you have to go two-handed. You have to for the damage because of right. variance. But for bulk, you could have had a nice damage-dealing tank that uses a two-hander at the same time, and they're not losing anything by not using a shield. So if, if there's ever a fight that hits hard, you're going to have to go shield because you're getting 1,000 more defense, not to mention you know more passives, etc. Not to mention on top of that, even on top of all that, Let's go to the two-handed version. The two-handed Sword of Light, which is a completely free item. It's a TMR from a rainbow unit you can use see in Chronicle. That can be converted to a two-hander. That, again, that would give you 500 um, flat defense, and it gives you 100% LB damage. So a free Chronicle weapon that's permanent content is just better in every way than her own, his brand-new STMR. So this is... A huge, huge misstep by the unit designers. And they usually do great jobs. This time, they are just asleep at the wheel. This is a tremendously bad STMR. And hopefully, it's it's not going to be. But I would love for them to fix it before it releases on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And also, worth noting that her TMR does not give a quip mace. <laughs> oh, that too. Yeah, sad, that too. Sad. Cool. I kind of had the same feeling. It's like, yeah, it's two-handed, which is like cool because you're not splitting your weapon in peril and all that other stuff. But like, man, this is the, if you're if you're dealing if you're bringing a tank, you're not generally not bringing them as a DPS. So like, setting her up this way is, is just very goofy to me. Um, but that's just that's just my my opinion. Anybody else? Yeah, and like I said before, her unit is just like an amalgamation, but in a bad version of older units, because. They have the potential, for example, for Wilk, they made his STMR two forms. They could have made this a one-hander and a two-hander version mm -hmm. as, a, as a crafting recipe or whatever. The TMR is just poo-poo as opposed to older units that gave, like, equip gun or equip sword, etc., etc. Um, and the rest is what Sinzar pointed out, so... So it, and it's and just in Discord about like even a month ago, I was just saying hopefully Gumi doesn't make every single Glex STMR a weapon, and up to now it's the trend, and I it just disappoints me, but I choose to ignore it. Okay. Why? I know her weapon. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I know I know her weapon may suck, but what if she has some good passives that maxes out her defense, like when equipping it? Wouldn't that make her better? Uh, well, well, yeah, sure, sure. I'm, I'm sure she will have, you know, mace-based passes, but unless, like, you just can't gear, um, the, 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 there, there's just no getting around, because she's only getting 500 from from the STMR, so she's only getting 500 flat. Unless there's a passive in the kit that says specifically you have to be equipped with, what's it called, the true Midnight Star, and you're getting an extra 1,000 defense, 
then that would make up the difference. And sure, in that case, you you would go with the with the with the true midnight star. But unless she has something that specifically hard locks her to the STMR, then you're going to get more defense and more bulk by going with the one hander plus shield. Mm -hmm. While I've got it here too, um, just want to point out that Tony and Justin are in costume. <laughs> they are. There was that was a that was a fun little addition. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this, and we'll get back to what we were talking about. Um, and so do we have any more thoughts or feedback that we haven't haven't touched on yet for Lilith before we move on? I don't I don't have any personally. Uh, card animation is cute. Card it's animation nice. is cute. That's, that's on it or bad. Yeah. Uh, the one other thing I'd mention is um, currently the reason everyone uses Runda as their tank is 85% mitigation. So they need to give Lilith matching or better so 85 mitigation for the party just like ronda absolutely i was just saying to somebody uh like right before we got on this call that unless her mitigation is as good or better she's got some really big robotic shoes to fill uh -huh. yeah, if yeah her mitigation is like you know i'm sure she can deal damage but if you're bringing her as a tank and she's not protecting the party the same or better than a free unit like you have made a mistake in unit design mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure she'll have some good mitigation. You know, she's a global exclusive unit, so definitely she'll be good, I hope. I hope. Hope so. Um, so we're going to move on from Lilith and talk about some older units getting upgrades, which is exciting. We're going to start with Sakura. So um, is this EX plus two, the unlock the ability of elemental power lightning, is that the 100% amp? It's the 100% scaling, scaling amp, kind of like... Yeah, kind of like Lefty. It's single target, too. Single target, 100%. So st still not outclassing Sylvie, but, you know, she can also do the Imperial Field at 50%, which is kind of... Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was also upgraded to be uh, enemy side only, so it is not dual sided any longer after the crowns. Yes, which is very nice. Um, but you know, it's, you know what is missing from the slide? What's that? Burst. The burst spell. <laughs> yeah, the burst. People were saying that in chat. Where's burst? Where's burst? Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's, it's so confusing. Anybody going to be crowning Sakura and, you know, by the same extension, uh, Nickel, who's getting the same stuff except for water? On Global, it's really hard to say, man, because intrinsic abilities use crowns. Mm -hmm. It's really, really hard to say. I, I personally would just wait and sit on it until day that, oh, I can't do this without upgrading them. For example, yeah, in, in JP, I crowned Nicole in order to beat the catastrophe trial in the turn limit. Um, that being said, for global, we've got Sukiko, so I don't foresee that being necessary on global. Okay. Yeah, does it make them good at all, though? Their crown abilities are they good with them? Uh, well, the crowns are just for the field. That is it. The 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 the, the amplify is is an EX two ability. So that okay. that I, I, I yeah correct yeah. So the, it's just the field and you know um catastrophe is weak to uh light and water and then on jp uh there is no good light in peril field you know nix has one but it's bad mm -hmm. um yeah so you pretty much had to use nicole to do it in jp but global's got sukiko global's has got massively higher just baseline power so i don't think this is going to be necessary on global yeah I would say of the two, probably the better would be uh, Nicole, just because we Sylvie exists. So like Sakura getting a, a single target version of it is just like whatever, you know. Especially you know, it, it is one use every ten turns, which is nice. But um, you know, Sylvie can do it twice. If if it, if it hasn't died by the time Sylvie does it twice, you're doing something wrong. So mm -hmm. cool. Um, speaking of intrinsics, El Elmsmore, are you excited about this? Well, I need to see the mods. Um, it's it looks a bit low to me, mm -hmm. to be honest. Just a little low. Uh, it could have been fully uh, like it could have been two hundred percent instead of one hundred percent for true double hand. Mm -hmm. it could have been two thousand attack or more instead of one thousand. But I mean, we need to see the mods that it adds to everything else, and just the hundred percent killer to Reaper and monsters when a previous intrinsic gave them Omni Killer. I mean, but that's fine, but it's mainly the stats and what, what the mods will be that's the, going to determine. But I love Carton, so, yeah. and they switched it that it's not going to be behind the pole by what I understood. So, yes, I will buy the recipe. Will I make it, though? Again, going back to the fact that we don't get that many crowns, 
uh, well, I'll have to wait and see the, uh, the data mine or the, the actual item on uh, Thursday. Yeah. Personally, I think this should have been at least equipment attack 200%. Um, just because it, it, with it being at 100%, now you're having to sacrifice, you know, either a card and an ability slot or two ability slots to, to get to 100%, unless you're using, you know, um, TMRs for accessories and stuff like that, that like, you know, that, that give it, but, um, it just having it be at a, a at 100% makes it too hard to get to the cap still, in my opinion. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, these, these passives are, are not, not very high in the first place, so the only thing that could potentially save it is the modifier, but as we talked about last month, um, Noppy needed something like 400x or better to her modifiers to uh, make it worthwhile. She ended up getting 100, which is why she was an absolute joke and terrible. Uh, so if Cardin has a low modifier, uh, he's going to be an absolute joke, and then of course there's you know Melia's intrinsic, which is like the biggest joke in history. Yeah, yeah. Big time sad for Melia. Um, now, I, I assume all three of you have Carton. <laughs> yes. Yep, mine's the X3. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't even have Carton, so we're, we're going to, depending on how, how stuff goes on Thursday, um, you know, we'll, we'll see if I end up with a Carton, but it certainly won't be EX3. Um, but I, I don't, I don't, unless the mods are really good, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. If it's, a, if it's, if it's not too hard to make it, you know, Noppies was too much of an investment for me, so... Uh, but if this is a uh, if this is not too much to make it, we'll see. Who knows? Now his IA is it for true dual wield or double hand? Because that says a weapon in both hands. So does that mean dual uh, it wield? It says single weapon equipped in both hands. So that's true double hand. All right. Thanks for clarifying. It was a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good question. Anything else to say about Carton before we move on? Mm. I wish it was better. Fair enough. You know what I wish we saw? One for Ibarra. <laughs> That's what I wish. First. Oh, yeah. That'd be nice. I like Ibarra yeah. so much better than Carton, but that's just me. All right. So we mentioned that uh, my one of my favorite things is that we're getting something other than just Clash of Wills, and that is going to be this event dungeon, One Cut of the Undead. We're going to be getting this Chainsaw Whip Plus, which is a budgety two-handed weapon. Um, I, it is a whip, not a sword, which is kind of neat. Um, but it's an attack whip. Um, what do you What do you guys think about that? I like it. You know, it's free gear. You know, so and you can use it for budget runs. You could use it for simple, simple setups and whatnot. So yeah, I like it. Hmm. I guess that's better than Yigo's SPMR, so sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, but man, that, again, with the, these random numbers, boost equipment by attack by 75%. That's like, ugh. Couldn't you just make it 100? Yeah. This is completely whatever. I mean, it's, yeah. probably, it's probably just to cater for new players, I would say. Yeah. Because it's lacking in every single aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I got disconnected twice earlier, so I don't know if it, uh, you heard the, me no, going in. It. I did not. It was, it was just fine. Uh, that's good. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, this is uh, probably just for new players. Yeah. But we also get this. Uh, so we're going to be getting, you know, everybody's going to be getting uh, a five star Lucius. We're going to be getting some tickets, some fragments for Lucius. So you can get your Lucius to, you know, uh, NVA. Um, what are y'all's thoughts about this situation? Lucius being here. Uh, they didn't mention any unit upgrades or buffs, so it sounds like. Not. He's just a bonus unit, and uh, yeah, he was he was de dead on arrival when he came out a year ago, and that's just been even worse today. So he's a bonus unit, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm yeah, Daffin garbage. I'm excited to get some fragments for mine, just because mine is like I think mine is NV uh, zero, um, but like you know, I'm never going to use him for anything. So who's ready to chain divine ruination frames? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's a shame they didn't do anything for him, especially that they're featuring him as a, a free unit again. Yeah, just give him bolting strike, like everybody. Else. Yeah, or even or even a surprise intrinsic. Why not? I mean, just something. But uh, like like everybody pointed out just now, it's just going to be a free unit for a bonus to whatever event. Uh, oh yeah. He's just going to wear the Hyo Vision card and do the Extreme Nova Chain because that modifier is ridiculous. So that's what he's <laughs> that's what he's going to do. We Good point. We are also getting 
um, this challenge event, challenge the almighty zombified director, don't stop slashing with this wonderful etc. reward. Uh, I just, it's, it like, I don't know. I'm, what is the point of the yellow pearl? Like, they couldn't give a red pearl. We don't even need red pearls anymore, but they couldn't give a red pearl. Why are they being so cheap for Halloween? A yellow pearl as reward? Really? Uh, actually, uh, if you recall during the live stream, I was just still telling that exact thing to myself because every single reward they showed only had a yellow pearl in it. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm, I'm glad there's NBA yeah. X tickets. But... <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Enjoy your Navigations cloud. Yeah, hopefully it's a 10 from that challenge, you know? That would be nice. But the real challenge and the real content is right here. The crumblier. What do we think of the sprite? I like it, you know? It's different, you know? It's really cool. It looks like a golem. And yeah. I like not, my fav not my favorite of the ones they've done. Mm -hmm. Not better or anything, but they've had better. It reminds me of 80s cartoons. Like, kind of like a Ninja Turtles enemy or something like that. <laughs> it does look like a Ninja Turtles enemy. I like that they're going with green instead of purple. For once. Just for variety, mm -hmm. you know. So that's kind of cool. Well, yeah, like we were discussing me and you, Gert, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Like, I would have liked like a uh, Lich Returns or Skeleton King Returns, but it, it's cool. just it's too cartoony. This could have been like a DX battle or something else, but as the cow battle, I would have wanted something epic. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it'll look. Maybe this is just the the beginner stage. Maybe he's not like fully formed. Maybe he like gets a bunch of bone spikes and. Stuff. I think he's just gonna turn purple by the end. Oh gosh, don't do that to me. I do love I do love me some purple stuff, but um, you know. I like that he's green. Of course, weak to dark, water, and light. We've talked that to death. Um, but even more exciting than the fight itself, which we're obviously gonna have to see what what comes our way, is I think this. Who's excited about this? I'm super excited about this. Tell me why. I mean, it's a different armor for once. Uh, so we have clothes. Now we have light armor. So that's more units that I can equip on the party. And this goes up to 165 attack and magic. It's even better than the clothes. Yep. Very cool. And for units that can't wear clothes, this is an option. Like a lot of units can't. Cool. Pretty cool. I do find it, I do find it kind of funny. You, you know, Gumi loves to rub salt in the wound, so we're getting the obnoxious shop. And one of the units previewed is uh, Neo Vision's Edge, who we just recently skipped all his upgrades. So he he should be the literal best Thunderbreaker in the game, and he's not. He is just terrible still. He well, he did not get his his fixes. He it's a whole whole different topic, but yeah. I well, that was the press during the live stream just to point it out, though. I mean, they, they are aware that we're asking for the upgrades. They said that they're going to address it maybe in the future. At, at, at least they're doing a better job at communicating than they used to. Uh, just to defend them on that point, obviously I agree with you, and I'm one of the biggest complainers of the stuff we're missing out of that JP got. But at least they, they mentioned it, that they're aware of our comments. It, yeah, is, a, cool. it, it is a first step. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, communication is key, you know? I think so. Um, I'm really excited that uh, Sky is there, though. So many players I hear from, like, you know, what if I don't have Sky? Well, now is your chance. <laughs> so please go pick Sky, unless they put something really, really good in the other slots. Sky is probably going to be the top pick. Well, my complaint on Sky is that she's a little bit too late on the obnoxious shop. Mm -hmm. So that's my biggest complaint because I went ham for her. And uh, recently, I just got so many off banners of her. Mm. So she's a little too late because I think she should have been two cow cows prior to this one. That would probably uh, be correct. She is still really good. And for newer players that own zero of her, uh, don't forget, you can grab her with the the shards on day one of the clash, whatever. Do we actually get 3,000 from the first? I think we do. Mm -hmm. We yeah, do. So you, can, so you can grab her and then you can get 50 shards to EX1 her. From the the login login fragment shards we're getting right now. The uh, the tickets. 
Yes. 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 So, so you could use her against the current Clash of Wills, and she is actually uh, calculated to be one of the highest damage dealers for the upcoming Clash of Wills because her intrinsic gives killers for that race, that race, etc. And yes, yeah, she'll be. Um, well, she's very squishy. So as soon as she can survive, right. she'll hit very. She'll hit very hard. Because then you'll need Lilith to take care of her. <laughs> but maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Cool yep. though, cool though, and they didn't they didn't highlight what any of the uh, of the uh, abilities on it are going to be, um, but I'm I'm hoping that there's you know some variant of rulers, some variant of magisters, um, and maybe some other interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Yeah, just more options for magisters, um, <laughs> and of course the etc. reward is on this page too. Very cool. Yeah, and just one more thing. I, I hope that they fix the animation at some point. So because now it's another, <laughs> it's another cow item that's gonna oh make gosh. that me wait five minutes for the animations. Thankfully, you can't wear two pieces of armor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. But it's still oh, a little yeah. unit, it's, so I stop looking at the animation for each unit. Spread out a little bit. So yeah, cool. I'm excited. Uh, we're also getting. Login campaign stuff. Now, do we we already have protective pendant, don't we? Uh, yes, that's an it's an old event gear. I guess we're getting another one. Awesome. In fact, I think we even have two of them already. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, Probably. We're getting a guaranteed five star NV times one. That looks like a banner ticket one, right? That's not an EX. Um, technically, <laughs> yes. I think those. Well, then again, I used that and got a flammy, so maybe they do a write up on the banners. There's no real confirmation if there is or isn't, I guess. Yeah. And then the real highlight, I would say, is the one, the 110 NV times 10. So everybody gets a guaranteed Neovisions unit. Um, just, guaranteed just cloud. In. Yeah, you get a guaranteed cloud. Guaranteed. That or it's going to be a crap star. So, you know. I need that. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I would not mind that, uh, but that's just me. Um, and that, of course, means you got to log in during the entirety of the campaign, but that's cool. Um, and then right there at the end, they gave us a trick or treat. Um, instead of us having to like compete and like make sure that we got all the like the communi community participation rewards, everybody's getting some lapis, some tickets, or a ticket, um, some keys, which they were talking about during the live stream that people want more keys. So there you go. Four, there's four diamond keys um, and uh, 200 energy and more yellow keys. Just one thing I, I complain when they mention this is that they're like, oh, we don't know how to fix this for the future. Can you give us some advice? I'm like, start with not giving bronze keys at every event. That would be number one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's kind of like a it's kind of sort of strange because when, when, they, when they change the JP crafting system for the killer abilities to the enlightenment keys, everyone was like amazing. This is awesome. This is great. Uh, until you run out of keys. Then all of a sudden, the infinitely farmable JP version ends up being technically better, um, just because that is you can craft infinite, whereas on global they are you know once you run out of keys, you're just you're just that period. Yeah, you you cannot get more. Say <sighs> lovey, right? But we we get Clash of Wills though. Um, cool. So that was all the slides, basically. Um, and so I'm going to leave that there, and we're going to go on to our final set of questions here. So of what we've seen in tonight's uh, live stream and all the slides, what are you guys looking forward to most as a player? And is there anything you hope to hear about but didn't get to? I'm going to start with you, Darkness. Well, for the first part of the question, I'm looking forward to them giving intrinsic intris ability to other Jap Japan units and all that, like they said they would, you know? That would make them so much better and all that. I can imagine if Golbez got a IA. Oh, boy, that would make me so happy, you know? Mm. Mm, I could see that. Anything you didn't get to hear about? Well, this wasn't a major update, so I didn't expect much, to be honest. Um, so hopefully they discuss more at the next live update on November 19th. Mm hmm um, what I'd like to hear about, it, they already asked the questions of exactly what I'd like to hear about. The trust shop, you know, what they're going to do with that. For now, they said they don't know. They're going to discuss it with, internally. Um, other than that, again, just more content, trials, chamber of arms, stuff like that. But we'll see what the future brings. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree with Elms. You know, we need more content other than a Clash of Wills and whatnot. We need a little bit more events on Dead Weeks and whatnot, too. How about you, Sinzar? Uh, for me, it's pretty much the same thing that Clad said. Um, it's it's all it's for me. It was all about the unit upgrades. They they asked the question and they discussed it briefly. And uh, yeah, like that's probably my single absolute number one biggest frustration with Global is the way they constantly skip the unit upgrades from JP. And that also goes to the part that I hope to hear and didn't get to, which is the answer. So they gave kind of like a non-answer. They just said, you know, we're aware you're unhappy about it. Uh, tune in later for more information. So that's like really frustrating because we're exactly where we were from the start. Like we still don't have them. We still don't have any kind of information when we're getting them. And like, was it two or three months ago? They said, you know, we're going to start uh, updating JP units to be usable in Clash of Wills with the morale stuff. They said yeah. that. They said that is going to happen. That was, it's, I, I think that was during the anniversary stream in the end of June. We're now almost finished October. We have seen nothing on that. So three to four months ago, and there's been no progress. So it, it, it's really like harming their trust for the, with the community when they say things, because they say things and then just don't do it. Yeah. Or they take six months or beyond to do what they say. So that's, that's really frustrating. So they say, you know, we hear your feedback. We're going to work on it. But they said they're going to be updating JP units for Clash four months ago. Here we are. Nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And remember around that, uh, when Angela came out with Hawkeye originally, they made a mistake and the five and four star units came with their uh, upgraded versions with the STMRs and everything. Now we had Legends of Mana and they didn't even bother doing them. Yeah, they take, yeah, they take so much away, like... They gave us the abilities, then took them away. They say they're going to give us some things, and don't give us things. Uh, it's confusing at times. Yeah. I would say what I'm most looking forward to as a player, uh, honestly, is... Um, gosh, just the variety of stuff. I'm looking forward to new, new, new gear that we can craft. I'm looking forward to... Um, you know, just something to something to s spend time working on, other than, um, you know, just just rerunning trials with different units. Um, but something that I'm ex that I really hope to hear about, but didn't get to, was honestly Chamber of the Vengeful. Like I was really hoping to hear that this would be the month that we would get a new Chamber of the Vengeful trial. Um, you know, even the, even if it's going on the same time as Clash of Wills, and I imagine that those do take a lot to like put together. Um, but still, like we've we've had that content sitting there since the anniversary with nothing to do since um, since Morgana, and you know what a cool opportunity to do it at Halloween. You know, bring back you know Gooligan, you know something like that as a as a Halloween. Yeah. Game. That's one of my biggest regrets because originally when they announced Chamber of the Ventral, if everybody recalls, they said this is a monthly event, mm -hmm. and I'm still waiting for it to be monthly. Yep. Sure. They did, though, say, which is, I'm, there's always been a lot of speculation about this, but I, I am glad to hear them actually say, like, you know, one of the issues that they have is, you know, productive manpower. So, um, you know, that at least gives a reason for why some of these things happen rather than just like being a bunch of speculation and, and, and things like that. So, you know, like, like you guys said, you know, some communication is better than no communication um, and I, as you know a bunch of people saw me talk about the other day like i think communication is just super super important so that said uh do you guys have anything left to say that i didn't bring up not specifically uh uh they did say at the very very end um that hiroki is going to be on the next live stream which is i think i think they said uh november 19th yes so that's kind of like your soft confirmation of when the near is going to happen <laughs> yeah because hiroki's not going to come out for like the final fantasy 3 banner or something no I, i'd say that's probably a good guess mm -hmm. oh yeah definitely uh i'm excited for near by the way good deal good deal you know, my question for you guys is which of you is going to pull for the lift 
that always depends on the data mine. Um, she is a class she will unit, and even though I predict based on the preview that she is not going to live up to my expectations, um, I'm sure she's still going to be probably MVP in this specific Clash of Wills. So I'll probably go for her. Will I go all the way to EX3? That definitely depends on the data mine. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go for EX1 at least, you know, because she's going to be limited, you know, and we'll get all the shards in the VIP shop. So you'll be able to at least get her to EX2 right away, right? Did they actually say if she's limited or not? Uh, I kind of I kind of assumed she would be, but did they confirm that in the stream? They did not mention it. I don't think they mentioned it. And also, I'm just going to jump back to her card really quick because... Okay, they you do get it at EX 1 and 3, so she's not premium. We didn't mention that. Um, so she is not a premium unit, but she is an SLB, so you obviously want EX 3 um, to use her more frequently. Just worth throwing that out there. Um, but okay. Uh, I am probably I'm not planning on pulling for la with lapis. I'm planning on throwing some tickets to see what happens, um, just because I like collecting um, and I don't want to miss out on an opportunity to to have a, a potentially good unit. But like like I already mentioned, if she's not better at doing Runda's job than Runda, then I'm not too worried about it. Um, yeah. And one last note is uh, one thing I should have said that I didn't mention that I would have liked them to mention is Ibarra. No mention of intrinsic abilities for a bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very sad. Very sad. But she's, yeah, but she's they... still good at Clash of Wills, right? I mean, her, her LB still hits really hard. She does. She's good for this one as a dark uh, magic dealer. Mm -hmm. And you can capitalize on boost for her because she doesn't have anything else to do other than just hit with her LB. Mm -hmm. Yep. She's uh, she hit really hard. Uh, someone else that's gonna hit really hard in the Clash Wells is actually Golbez. Mm -hmm. Kind of funny. He actually uh, calculates as pretty high damage even in Clash Wells. Yep. Even without the modifiers, because I was planning on bringing him anyways. You know. Yep. Uh, I, I forget by memory. I think based on my calculations, he was like number six in damage, which is not the best, but I mean it's definitely usable. And you can use him to cap cow or just. Uh, 99. Well, you, you can use him, you know, on your team. Yeah. As as far as will he cap like by himself, that totally depends on the boss's defense. We uh, for that we have to wait for it to go live. We'll see. We will see. All right. Well, thank you guys, all three of you, for coming and hanging out and chit chatting after the uh, after the live stream. I know it's late for everybody. Um, but I do appreciate each and every one of you and all the stuff that you guys do in, uh, in, in all of our little cluster of the, the internet here. So yeah, I appreciate you. Sure thing. Had fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It was fun, man. Thank you for having all of us. Yeah. Thanks for organizing this. Absolutely. Uh, and for everybody else, we'll see you in the next video, uh, which should be for my case on Tuesday night. So we'll see you then. Take care. Sure.